Hello, and I hope you're having a great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is, wherever you happen to be watching this video. My name is Ryan. Today, we're going to be talking about the brushless power system and how do we select one for our specific application. Now, we're going to get into each category specifically. We're going to talk about each component within the brushless system, and we're also going to be talking about it at a fairly high level. We're not going to get into the nitty gritties, the details of each specific component. So let's get started and first talk about our application. So quite obviously, the most important part of our a selection is going to be knowing the application that you have to fit a power system in. If you know that you're going to set it in a specific application, that's when you can get started. So for example, let's pick an application. We know it's going to be um, a radio controlled airplane, for example. When we know that it's going to be a radio controlled airplane, the first component that we have to select is our battery pack. Now we do that by knowing exactly how much voltage we're going to need in order to operate that airplane. If our airplane happens to be fairly large, we're going to need a fairly high voltage rating of our battery to get the power out of it in order to push that airplane along at a good pace. Same thing if we are getting a radio controlled boat, for example. If we're getting a boat, we need to make sure we understand how large that boat is so we can apply the correct voltage to it as an input to our power system. That is where we have to start. This is when we start to get into the brushless motor side of things. Once we understand the application, then the battery pack we have to understand more so the brushless motor now we're going to come back to the actual battery pack to get into a couple more details of that specifically so when we talk about that brushless motor what we're going to look for is the specific kV value this is the parameter that is most important to that brushless motor we want to make sure that our brushless motor is operating in the correct range of total RPM output for our application. So now it swings back to the application. We have to understand if we need a higher RPM or a lower RPM sort of output. For example, if we have a 6S radio controlled airplane and it's more of like a trainer style, then we're going to need a relatively slower RPM. The output range of the motor that we possibly are looking for may be in between 10,000 and 15,000 RPM. Therefore, we can do the math in order to get the correct KV of our motor. Now, another thing that we're able to do also is understand the power output that we need from that motor. The power output that we need from that motor is also going to select the size of the motor that we physically need. A larger motor is going to be able to dissipate a, a larger amount of total power. This way, we know exactly what size that motor is. Once we understand the size of the motor, we can go back to the battery pack and grab the correct capacity. So the way that this works is our capacity and our C rating of the battery pack is going to allow us to understand what kind of total continuous power output that battery can deliver. Based on the power that we expect to pull from our brushless motor, we can source that battery pack and spec it accordingly. We want to make sure we're paying attention to the capacity as well as the C rating of that battery pack. Once we have those components figured out, we have the application, we know what RC vehicle we're running, we then selected our battery pack, we then have selected our brushless motor, we know all the parameters about them, we can now source and select them. The last and final component that we need to select is our speed control. Our speed control is going to be heavily based on the brushless motor specifically. And the reason why is we have to understand the input to that brushless motor in terms of voltage as well as the current. Our brushless speed control has to be at least a minimum of that plus our headroom. So when we talk about a brushless motor that's going to deliver, let's say, 50 amps at about 6S voltage, which is 22.2 volts nominally, we know that our speed control has to have an input voltage that is going to accept the 22.2 volt mark. We also then understand that our speed control is going to need to have a continuous discharge rating of at least 50 amps. And of course, we don't want to get a 50 amp speed control. We want to make sure we have more headroom in that speed control. So we're going to go Go up and we're going to get a 75 amp speed control. This way we have that 50% sort of headroom in order to make sure our speed control is safe. 
So that talks about the specific electrical components of our power system in order to make them safe. The next part of the power system is the load. So when we talk about the load of the power system, in an airplane, for example, it will be the propeller. This is the final piece of the puzzle to select for our power system. If it were to be a radio controlled car, you already know what kind of total RPM you need. You already know what kind of speed your radio control car is you're expecting to get out of it. Then you'd have to select the gearing. So the gearing and the propeller for the airplane as well as a propeller for a boat is the same when we're talking about the load of our application. When we go ahead and select the propeller for our airplane, we're looking for one that will land us to our goal power output. So if we expect it to run at 50 amps and 22.2 volts, we now need to go and select that propeller that's gonna get us there. So we wanna go ahead, select the diameter of that propeller, the pitch of that propeller, we wanna put that onto our radio controlled airplane. And then the first thing that we wanna do is power it up and make sure that we're hitting the power levels that we expect. If we are above and beyond this threshold, then we wanna go and reduce our load. Remember, it is the load that can kill your power system. If you're drawing too much power, reduce your load. If you're not drawing enough power, increase your load. Make sure that you have this selected accordingly and then you will have a very reliable system. So that's pretty much it. That sums up how you pick your power system at a very high level. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.